Good morning. It is Friday morning. Right now it's 8.20. I've just kind of been puttering, relaxing, watching YouTube, feeling a little tired today. Uh, it's been a busy week, lots of appointments and in and out of the house. And yesterday we, Caitlin and I, um, picked up a bunch of soil bags for my raised garden bed to bring it back up to where it was in the spring and uh, it was a lot and it's still not full. So just tired, uh, laid in bed. I got up with Clayton and then um, I was gonna start my day like I like filmed me turning on my little wax melts and I was gonna start cleaning and I climbed back in bed <laughs> and watched YouTube. I'm just tired, like I feel tired, but it's eight o'clock now. I was gonna wait until later to start filming, like when my son went to work and stuff, but he has left for a college class, so I thought might as well start now. So uh, I haven't done anything yet this morning, but I made myself a little list yesterday, well, last night. <clears throat> I haven't cleaned out my pressure canner since I pressure canned potatoes, and I need to do that. I need to go start a little laundry. I wish I would have done that early this morning. Ah, picked up my new vacuum yesterday. It was actually $10 cheaper than it was online, which is really exciting. And it was already $20 off online. So score. I need to wipe down my bathroom and pick up clothes off my closet floor because I've been a slob. <laughs> and then... I want to make some pie dough. I'm going to make an apple pie, like a Dutch apple pie tonight or today for tonight. And I want to make extra because on Monday we're going to have chicken pot pie for dinner. So I'll just leave it in the fridge or I'll put it in the freezer or something. I just threw my hair up. I'm going to go exercise in a little while, but it's still just like 65 outside and I'm just not ready yet. Um, what else? I wanna make some more bagels, especially some jalapeno cheese bagels because Clayton loved those. Um, I need to make some hamburger buns because we're having hamburgers for dinner. I think I'm also going to make some hot dog buns and I might just like freeze half of them and keep half of them in the fridge or in the pantry. <clears throat> I'd like to see like how well they last because the hamburger buns will last for quite a few days. Um, so if the hot dog buns did too, that would be so great. And I also want to make some French bread. I want to make some cookies. Caitlin and I are going to make some mini um, pumpkin cream cheese bites, but I don't know if that's going to be today. So I am like on a journey to make a lot more from scratch. I just, I feel better about it. I'm liking how it's turning out. I'm liking not having to buy <laughs> these expensive bread products because I mean, let's face it, like bread is getting expensive. And I mean, I'm like, I'm getting it expired. I'm getting it like dry and, and crumbly. And like, you know, you put your hot dog in your hot dog bun and you take a bite and the hot dog bun crumbles. It's like, that's not worth my five dollars because like that's what hot dog buns are now like five dollars a pack which is insane unless you buy like the cheapo walmart ones but i mean so anyway definitely today hamburger and hot dog buns and an apple pie for sure pie crust that goes with that but um not sure about anything else Monday would be nice because like we can like prep for the week but um I think my husband would appreciate some bagels this weekend too so and they last in the fridge so possibly the bagels I am going to and Caitlin really wants some sugar cookies so maybe we'll do sugar cookies today all right so the first thing I want to do so I bought these um placemats on clearance last year. The tag says that you are to spot clean only 
don't bleach, don't tumble dry, don't dry clean, and do not iron. <laughs> well, they're already getting a little dirty and I'm not gonna spot clean them, okay? Um, I, what I'm gonna do is spray them with Dawn like power wash spray. I'm gonna throw them in the washer just on like a gentle cycle and try to dry them on the table like flat because I don't know if you can tell, but like they're not, <clears throat> see how it's like not laying flat? They're not laying flat. And I, I want to try to like wash them and then lay them out and maybe, maybe they will lay flat. I still love them. I'm still going to keep them out, but I would like for them to be flat. So first, first I'm going to do that. Oh, but I want to start a load of laundry. Maybe I'll start a load of my laundry. I'll spray those and let them sit and they'll be the second load. <laughs> All right, and then I'm excited to get to vacuum today, whole house vacuum. Um, so I'll start a little laundry, pick up my bathroom. I'm not gonna film any of that stuff. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna go exercise and I will meet you guys back in the kitchen in probably a couple of hours. <laughs> I hope you guys are having a great day today. I really appreciate you clicking on my video and taking any time to hang out with me. It really means a lot to me. I am almost at 900 subscribers, so I'm getting close. And um, I just, I just appreciate all of you that have subscribed to my channel and have helped me, you know, grow this much. It's really exciting. I'm really excited about the holidays and the, the things that are to come. Thinking about doing um, Vlogmas this year. I don't know for sure, but like the thoughts going through my head. I'm really looking forward to um, no spend January this year. I am hoping to spend nothing on food in January. I'm actually like really like hyped up about it. Like I've got a good, um, a good amount of food in my overflow pantry and I'm so excited about just no spending none <laughs> last year i did a very low spend january i'm i'm amping it up this year you guys and i also every january well yeah every january i do like a no amazon spend because i feel like in november and december i am shopping from amazon like so so much that i need like a detox so january is just like all together a no spend month for us period and I'm excited to see how far I can take that like like don't go anywhere <laughs> don't buy any food like out of the house I'm excited so we will see there's a little prepping that I want to do for that too but um yeah so if you haven't subscribed maybe hit that subscribe button and uh be here for all the things that are to come. All right, let's get going on this day. All right, we finally made it into the kitchen. <laughs> I feel like this was not the day to do this, but I have to be in here anyway. I gotta make hamburger buns for dinner. I feel like Friday night has become like hamburger night, so I gotta make the buns and I wanna make the pie. And anything else will just be extra at this point. So it's 1244. I did take out some butter a little while ago. Caitlin said she would like to make some cookies. Um, I was going to have her empty the dishwasher and I was just going to fill it as I went. But of course, I forgot to start it last night. So what's new? I've got my iced coffee. My cup for today says, there's always something to be thankful for. It's cute. It's got little like forest animals on it and leaves and stuff. So I've got a handful of green beans here I need to deal with. All I do is wash them, snap the ends off, and, like break them in half and throw them in a freezer bag into the freezer. That's it. So 
I do need to deal with those. First thing I'm gonna do is the pie crust. Oh man, I wanted to make bagels today too. I don't know. We're gonna see how I feel. I haven't eaten lunch yet, so I may have to stop for a break. I do have some water here too. I need to put some more ice in. You're gonna hear the dishwasher. The angle I feel like is weird. I feel like I had you up on something last time and I don't remember what it was. My tripod sucks. It doesn't want to like hold you straight. So we're struggling today, people. But you know what? I'm my list. I got everything marked off except I didn't mark off laundry because I'm still rotating it. I have one more load that's in the washer that needs to go in the dryer. Um and I did add on here, put away laundry. <sighs> that ain't happening. Uh, Caitlin has a little list too she's working on. So it's nothing else. I got some things done today. So, all right, we're making pie crust. I am making it with lard today. And it's got a recipe on here. All right, so I'm gonna double this. What I really, really, really want to do is try rolling it out and rolling it up in parchment paper and freezing it and see how it does. Um, because I would love to do all of my holiday pie crust in advance because I hate making pie crust. So we're going to use this recipe on the box. Two cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, two thirds cup of lard, five to seven teaspoons of ice water. And it does say to chill after you've um, made a dough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good to me. My pie recipe will just be out of my um, Betty Crocker cookbook. It's really old. My grandma, I think it was my, I think it was Clayton's grandmother's. So anyway, let's get this started. So we're in this bowl, we're gonna put two cups of flour and one teaspoon of salt. I'm unprepared. All right, I got half a cup. <laughs> Two different style measuring cups because these the one cup measuring cup in this shape doesn't fit in here so I bought some oblong ones that I use for this and I guess it's in the dishwasher so half now I'm not really sure where I came up or where I saw this but I like to add a um, I think it's a teaspoon of vinegar it might be a tablespoon I think it's a teaspoon I'll add it in with the water and my pie crust always seems dry so I like to go a little bit heavier on the water flat attachment on this. I'm just going to mix the salt and flour together really quickly. You got to plug it in first. What do you make it? Pie dough. Alright, I need two thirds of a cup of lard. Mm. I've been liking like weighing out stuff like this so I don't have to dirty measuring cups, but oh well, not today. 
These are the oblong ones I was talking about. Hopefully you guys can see me way down there. I'm a little concerned. Too late now. All right, here's one third. I'm gonna do four of these. All right, this is what it looks should look like. It should be kind of crummy. That looks really good, actually. I'm really happy with that. It's got some nice, like, bigger size chunks in there. Make our pie dough nice and flaky. All right, so I have one cup of cold water here. I am going to just start by adding, I'm going to add half of it and slowly blend it in. I'm gonna kind of treat this like biscuit dough. You don't want to over mix it. Sorry about the shadows, but it's just isn't a good spot in my kitchen. <laughs> um, so like biscuit dough, you're just, you're gonna blend it just until it starts forming uh, like a ball of dough. I'm gonna add about half of what's left in here. Okay, and like I said, I really don't want my dough to be dry. This actually, hmm. Let's see what it looks like down here. Yeah, it's a little dry down there. So what I'm gonna do is move that to the side. I'm gonna add a little bit of water down there in the bottom. That should be good. Okay, that looks great. Nice and soft. All right, I'm gonna take this out of here and uh, form it into a ball and we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for a few minutes. Now, remember this is a double batch. So if you wanted to make a double batch and just save some to roll out another day, you could just freeze it like it is right now. You don't have to roll it out and then freeze it. That's just something I'm trying. Um, normally, if I wasn't gonna use all this, I would just form it into like a disc and put it in a bag and put it in the freezer or fridge for whenever I was ready to use it. I'm just gonna chill this dough because um, my hands and stuff have warmed up that lard and when you're working with it, you want the fat to be cold. So I'm gonna wrap this one more time and then just stick it in the refrigerator while we're making the hamburger buns. I just took a minute to wash my bowl, write down the recipes because they were on my phone, and I record with my phone. So, I wrote it all down. So, my hamburger bun recipe is in grams, which is unfortunate for those of you that want to make this recipe and don't have a scale. Um, she might have it on there. She the the recipe comes from the pantrymama.com. She may have it on there um, in cups, but I'm just not sure. When I looked at it, I just saw grams. So I'm gonna measure right into my bowl. Actually, I have to measure the milk first. And if you see a fly flying around, get the fly swatter out. <laughs> Kill that sucker. I don't think I got it. <laughs> All right, I need 250 grams of milk. So I put my um, bowl or cup or whatever on my scale. I just zero it out and then I add the ingredient. And I will do the same thing for this bowl. 
250. 247. 248. <laughs> Ooh, 250.8. Nice. Okay, I have to heat this up. So in my mixing bowl, I am going to add 50 grams of sugar. And I usually cut back on this just because I feel like 50 grams is more than I need. Usually I'll do about 30. Won't hurt to cut out a little sugar where we can, especially when we're cooking from scratch. We get to decide what ingredients go into our food. All right, 30 grams of sugar, and then I'm gonna add my yeast. Seven grams of yeast. And I think that would be like equivalent to a yeast packet. So it was probably well, I don't know if I want to guess, but I'll say I used about three tablespoons of sugar in a yeast packet. <laughs> and I thought this measured in cups, but oh, it does. Ounces. All right, I have my warm milk here. I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my yeast and sugar. And we're just gonna let that sit there for a few minutes. All right, now this is my sourdough. I keep it in the fridge when I'm not using it and whenever I wanna use it, I will bring it out, I'll feed it, I'll leave it out on the counter for about 24 hours and then you can use it. But this recipe calls for sourdough discard, which means whatever you're taking out of this jar, because you'll wanna keep, keep 100 grams in the jar. So you're gonna take out everything except 100 grams and, and then you're gonna add 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of water. I may be wrong about that. It, you, could, you could keep 150 grams in here and feed it 150 grams of flour, 150 grams of water. It's just for my size container, I can only keep about 100 grams or else it would overflow. So that's what I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and add, um, what is this called for? 100 grams of my sourdough discard, and then what is, what, what's left in the jar, I will add 100 grams of flour and 100 grams of water too. I'm not particular about how much sourdough is actually left in here, because uh, it doesn't make too big of a difference if you're not like planning on using it right away, which I'm not. This is gonna be fed. I'm gonna leave it out on the counter. Tomorrow I'm gonna put it back in the fridge. So 100 grams in this bowl. This is not a sourdough tutorial. <laughs> All right, there's a good amount still in there. I have gotten it to where there's just a little bit on the sides and fed it and it still bubbled up like it was supposed to. So perfectly fine. So I have got the milk, sourdough, sugar, and yeast in here. I need to add my butter, my egg, my salt, and my flour. So let's do that. I'm gonna get the egg. Okay, and 100 grams of butter which is about all of this except for a tablespoon. So 
So what I do is I zeroed out my scale again. When I get a better knife, I'm gonna cut off about a tablespoon and then I'm just gonna put the rest in the bowl and see how much it is. Okay, that was 92.5, <laughs> so I'll just add a little bit more of this. Perfect. And the rest of that just goes in my butter dish. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna add my flour before I add my salt. I have just been keeping my bread flour in this bag, but I have a new package. So I'm gonna add what I need in here and then fill up the bag. So I need um, 500 grams of bread flour. Oh, that was 507. <laughs> Oh, this has water in it. There we go. It's not gonna make that big of a difference, but. Okay, and then 10 grams of salt. Now I'm gonna get my dough hook and we're gonna mix this up. All right, so my dough is looking a little bit, um, it's not really wet, it's just kind of like buttery. There's a lot of butter in that dough, so it looks kind of, um, I don't know, greasy maybe? I don't know, to me it looks a little wet, but you can see it's pulling away from the sides of the bowl. It's not sticking to the sides. So we're gonna let that knead for 10 minutes and then I will show you what it looks like. All right, I also took out my hamburger patties. I just froze them in stacks of four and I'm gonna let them sit out and thaw a little bit. Once I can get them separated, I'll put them on a cookie sheet and put them back in the refrigerator. I know this isn't a lot of green beans, but I picked this about, well, this is actually on the smaller side. So I pick a couple good handfuls every couple, every other day. And after a couple of days, I get a bag like this. So it's worth it. And they're just starting to produce. So pretty soon my bag like this will end up being a gallon sized bag, which will feed us a couple of times. All right, here is my dough, super soft, but not sticky. It doesn't really stick to you. It's just really soft because of all that butter. So I'm going to probably put this in another bowl because I'm going to reuse my mix. I'm going to use my mixing bowl to whip up some <sighs> hot dog buns. And then Caitlin and I, I think with the hand mixer are going to make some sugar cookies. So I'll put this in a separate bowl. We'll let it rise for an hour until it's doubled. And then we will shape the hamburger buns. All right, so I would say normally a recipe calls for you to let your dough double and um, calls for like sitting for an hour. My kitchen is warm. I I don't know why, but my dough rises a lot faster than that. So this is probably more like half an hour, but um, I am cutting my dough into like roughly four pieces. There's not really any reason why because I end up weighing it out anyway because I like each of my hamburger buns to be, you know, pretty pretty much the same size. I'm that person that wants to, you know, make sure they're they're all the same size. I don't want different size hamburger buns and this doesn't take very long. So I think it's 90 grams, but I could be wrong. Anyway, maybe I tell you later. I am going to um 
measure each of the these out, cut a little piece off, and then what I do is form it into a ball again, just kind of tucking the dough underneath itself to make it kind of round on the top and smooth. And then I just really flatten it out with my fingers. I push down with my fingers and then like spread them to kind of push the dough out. And then I will turn it and do it again, kind of like a crisscross pattern. I'm just trying to flatten and like push the dough out so it makes a little bit of a bigger hamburger bun and not such a tall uh, like top on the bun, if you know what I mean. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue to <laughs> weigh these. I know this seems kind of tedious now that I think about it, but I don't know. It's worth it for me to have um, all the buns about the same size. So, and honestly, <laughs> they're a little bit big. My husband loves them. He loves the size of them. Oh, and Caitlin is making sugar cookies next to me. So she pops in every few minutes, but um, he likes the size of them. I think they're too big. I can never finish my hamburger on these buns. He also likes... Uh, like a larger hamburger patty too, like a third pound burger. It's just like too much for my stomach. Now I'm not like saying like, oh, my stomach's so small, I can only eat so much. It's just, it's a lot of meat and bread, especially with all the condiments and everything. As I get older, I just, I can't eat that much anymore. So anyway, here they are. All right, so I'm going to, now I'm going to cover them up with plastic wrap and let them rise again. It's about 30 minutes. I also put an egg wash on them. And you can put whatever toppings you want. You could do no toppings. We love sesame seeds. And I love everything but the bagel seasoning. These are so good. All right, and here they are, fresh out of the oven. You can score the top if you want. It made almost 12, but these are nice and big and soft and delicious. Okay, this hamburger bun recipe I found on Deep South Texas's YouTube channel. So this is in cups and grams. I'm gonna do grams. This makes 12 five inch buns and yes, he did measure them, and the last time I made them, <laughs> so did I, and they worked down perfectly. So I'm not going to bore you with uh, measuring out all the ingredients again, but I will tell you it's three cups of bread flour, six ounces of warm water, four ounces of milk, one tablespoon of yeast, one eighth of a cup of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, one third cup of oil, olive oil, we're gonna do the same thing. Put it all in the mixing bowl, mix it up, knead it for 10 minutes, and then um, put it in a bowl and let it rise, just like the hamburger buns. So, all right, well, let's get started here. Let's get it started here. <laughs> Little little song for you there. Okay, so I'm gonna make a mix up these hot dog buns, not hamburger buns. Ah, I'm not used to being in the kitchen this long, honestly. Like I don't prep like this very often. Usually it's just like one thing, uh, you know, one thing a day, and it's kind of spread out. And it's actually Friday when I'm editing this. The next Friday, and. I have to make hamburger buns again because my family has eaten them all this week and the hot dog buns slash like several buns because some people just eat them as a sandwich but um yeah so i got my yeast and my oil and my sugar and my water in there and i'm just gonna finish mixing these up Oh yeah, this recipe calls for milk as well. I find that the milk bread recipes make the bread so much softer. I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna drink a little because there was a little too much in there, but I just heated up in the microwave for 30 seconds. I'm talking to Caitlin. She is looking up a sugar cookie recipe. She ends up doing this on her own um, on the other side of the kitchen and that was a win for me because I didn't have one other thing to do. But I'm thinking maybe like weekly, not even weekly, like I think I could make enough of these, put them in the freezer and have them for maybe two weeks. 
I don't know. I think that would be really nice. I'm just trying to be precise on my uh, flower here again, so I'm just scooping a little bit out. But I think a like baking prep day would really help me a lot, especially planning on having hamburgers uh, every Friday, <laughs> at least for this next month. We're we're going to do hamburgers every Friday for October, which works for me. You can see I still have my sourdough sitting out there. I think that was a little confusing what I was saying with the sourdough. I shouldn't really be saying anything because I'm not an expert. I've probably been going on two years with sourdough. This one sourdough I probably kept going for a year. I am planning on showing you how I make my sourdough. There's just a lot of tutorials on that kind of stuff. And I feel silly like doing another one, but we're going to do it. All right, this is lunch for today because when I'm in a hurry, <laughs> I like to eat a bowl of cereal. So I'm eating this cereal. Um, the hot dog dough is over there kneading. I set a timer for 10 minutes. Clayton's on his way home. So the rest of the video will be a voiceover because um, he likes to sit at the counter and we chit chat while I'm in the kitchen. So that is a special time of day for us. So. I'll see you guys when I'm all done. All right, so now I am working on the hot dog dough. I let it rise and now I've punched it down and I'm weighing it so I can um, cut it into even portions <laughs> again. <laughs> I just, I think it makes 12, maybe it makes 16. I think it makes 16. And I just divide whatever the whole ball of dough weighed and that's, you know, by 16, and that's how big the ham hot dog buns are going to be. So I actually don't like doing it this way. So I have done this twice, and what I end up doing is making all of these little balls. And the video that I watched, he rolled them out, um, measured how long they were, and then rolled them up like, you know, like a hot dog bun. Um more like French bread like you would roll up French bread and my problem is is the seam like no matter how much I pinch it and push it together it still seems to open up on some of the rolls so I think what I'm going to do this next time that I do these maybe today I really don't know but anyway I'm going to roll it out into like one big long piece um, you know really skinny like that and then just measure them and cut them and put them on the cookie sheet because I just would like them to look a little nicer. You'll see the end result after I bring them out out of the oven that that um, that seam, because you're rolling them like that and I'm pinching it, I'm pinching it, but it's still like opening up right there and it bothers me. It's not a big deal. They're still delicious. These are soft and oh my gosh, they're so good, you guys. I can't I can't even tell you how good they are. Just a really nice like creamy dough. Oh, so good. But anyway, I don't recommend rolling them that way. All right, so now, just like the hamburger buns, egg wash, um, I already put the sesame seeds on there. I'm gonna let them rise just for, I, I think it's like 20 minutes, and then we're gonna bake these. All right, so anybody else have one of these old Betty Crocker cookbooks? You know, I thought it was Clayton's grandma's, and then I thought it was mine, but I actually think my grandmother might have given this to me. Oh, do you see Clayton? He gave me a thumbs up. <laughs> so, I don't know, but I love this old cookbook. Let me know if you have one of those. Um, so, this is my pie crust. I'm going to go ahead and weigh it out. So, it's a top crust and a bottom crust for, um, you know, like one pie, but I only need a bottom crust for this pie. And again, <laughs> I'm weighing it out. You see Caitlin over there. She is making sugar cookies next to me, like I said. But, um, you know, we want each pie crust to have <laughs> the same amount of dough. So he's shown me something funny on his phone. Um, yeah, so what I was going for here was like, you know, when you buy Pillsbury pie crust, it's 
rolled up in a sheet of parchment paper. You let it defrost. I don't know about you guys, but I freeze mine all the time. And then I, I let it defrost and I unroll it and I use it. And I thought, well, I want the convenience of that, but I don't want to spend, I don't know what it is now. I think it's almost $5 for the Pillsbury brand or you can get like a great value brand for like 378 or something. I just think it's ridiculous and this didn't take very long. I guess the like longest part honestly was letting it sit in the fridge, but even rolling it up, I'm just trying to like patch it a little bit there. I like my pie crust to be nice and soft so I can um, you know, it's not like cracking and and breaking while I'm rolling it out, but anyway. I'm going to roll this up. As you can see, it did it did not take much time at all. And boom, there's half a pie crust right there. So what I want to do for the holidays is do a whole bunch of these and just buy I think I'm I think I'm gonna look for those two gallon like Ziploc bags that these could like fit in because they're longer. And I just want to like fill it back with pie crust and have all <laughs> Clayton and his fingers have all the um pie crusts ready for for the um holidays. Sorry, he's he's distracting me and he's not even here. <laughs> so yeah. I maybe I'll make like a dedicate I'm thinking of making a dedicated video of like some things that I want to make from scratch. There's some other things that like aren't just baked goods, but I'm just loving it. I'm loving this stay at home mom stuff again. I was a stay at home mom when the kids were younger, actually. Well, until my oldest was, I want to say in sixth grade. So, yep, a long time. And I enjoyed it, but I enjoyed working too. So, I am I am happy to be home with Caitlin, especially knowing I only have a couple of years left. So I don't want to, I'm not going to make this into a stay at home mom thing, but <laughs> there you go. So anyway, rolled out these pie crusts. This pie crust was really good with the lard. It, um, it was flaky and tender, almost like a puff pastry, but you know, like thinner. I liked this recipe. I am ordering more, more lard so I can make up a bunch of this pie dough. All right, so this is the last one. I've got my pie plate out here. I did spray that with Pam spray and I'm just pushing the crust down in it. Oh yeah, tasting Caitlin's sugar cookie dough. <laughs> I didn't even show the cookies, I'm so bummed, but she did such a great job and we all love them. I think they were gone in like two days. <laughs> We got up on, I think it was Sunday morning, and Clayton had some with his coffee, and I was like, you better save one of those for Caitlin, because she made them, and I don't even know if she got any yet. <laughs> she did. She ate some the day she made them, but it was funny. All right, so I, I'm going to put my crust in the fridge and get my apples ready now after I clean up my little mess here. I also am going to just wrap these pie crusts up as tightly as I can in plastic wrap and then I end up wrapping them in foil just to make sure they don't get freezer burned or anything or dry out. I just want to try to keep them fresh as possible. All right, that worked out better than expected. Um, I'll probably pull these, well, maybe two of these out in, um, I don't know, a week or two just to see how they defrost and then we'll make another pie with them in a couple of weeks so i'm excited to see how this turns out i'm gonna go throw these in the freezer out in the garage and now i'm gonna get started on the filling for the pie i used granny smith apples for this and i like i said i use a recipe out of my uh, betty crocker cookbook it's just sugar uh cornstarch cinnamon it needed more corn cornstarch though i don't even think the recipe called for it i need to find a new recipe i think but it was a little liquidy so i mixed all that together i peeled and sliced my apples and then i had them sitting in water and i drained them and then i just kind of mixed them into the cinnamon and sugar 
yum. Like I said, it, it definitely needed a little more uh, cornstarch. And this is the topping. It's just brown sugar, uh, old-fashioned oats, butter, and cinnamon. I think I put a little flour in there, too. I will leave the recipe down in the description box, but the crumb topping got a little bit dark, but it was so good. It's like a apple, um, I don't even know. Like, the topping is really crunchy with the butter and everything. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I, I wish I had some right now. <laughs> so I'm just crumbing that together with, what is that, a butter knife? <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting in there with my hands now. You guys ever make a crumb topping and have it like wet and not crummy? I hate when that happens. All right, and these babies are ready to go into the oven. You guys see how like round they are? Just wait. Wait till they come out. All right, so now the apples going into my pie crust I think maybe if I wouldn't have poured in the like syrupy goodness at the bottom of the bowl maybe they wouldn't have been so wet I don't know maybe my apples just had a lot of moisture in them <laughs> I don't know but it, it doesn't matter it was still delicious and the this was a lot of apples I like having my apple pies like mounded up with apples really good i don't make a lot of pies clayton likes pie he likes it best of all he doesn't like cake he likes some desserts that i make but pie is definitely his favorite i used to make him a cheesecake every year for his birthday and actually his birthday's tomorrow and i asked him if he wanted a cheesecake and he said no so i don't know what he wants but <laughs> Hopefully it's not an apple pie because I don't have any apples. <laughs> Actually I do, but they're honey crisp. But anyway, I put butter on here thinking I was making a regular apple pie and it's completely not necessary. <laughs> don't put butter on a Dutch apple pie. There's plenty of butter in the crumb topping. <laughs> I, you know, I sit there and I talk to Clayton and I just laugh and we have a good time and I, you know, I get distracted so I also would say don't press in the crumb topping unless you want it all like one hard piece I did find that when I cut it it the whole crumb topping like cracked I think if you just um, sprinkled it on top of the apples it might have worked out better you can see I'm kind of like pushing it in there and I mean, it doesn't affect the taste. It's just the texture of the topping, but oh, yum. This is like a, an apple crisp pie. <laughs> Actually, I love a crisp better even than this Dutch apple pie. So good. Peach crisp, my favorite. All right, and here are the buns. Like I said, they work out great, but I just don't like the look of them. So we're going to try something else next time. All right, friends, that is gonna be it for me for today. I am tired, it is 5.20. Uh, hot dog buns are done, hamburgers are getting ready to go on the grill. Hamburger buns are done. What else did I do? Pie is in the oven. I will show a picture at the very end, hopefully with a scoop of a vanilla ice cream on top. And I am worn out, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one bye guys and here it is so delicious gotta have the ice cream if I'm gonna have pie I would like it all a mode please <laughs> thanks for watching guys